Howdy folks, thank you for tuning in and today we're going to have a look at the Ostara uh, HR 25mm eyepiece and it's available to purchase in the description below, in the link in the description below. And why I'm showing you this is uh, in a, a number of videos that I've before I've often mentioned the dreaded erect image eyepiece which I believe is a 20mm that you get with uh, a number of the Celestron Astromaster and Powerseeker Newtonian telescopes and that's the Newtonians only and yes you do gain the erect image and so it's easy to use on terrestrial objects but for astronomy all stars and planets are round so why is that uh, an essential thing it doesn't matter if it was upside down although um, many people will say that in space there is no such thing as right way up and upside down but that to one side the erect image eyepiece that you get with the Celestrons, it's, it's a very good eyepiece, it's, it's okay, just okay, but you do have reduced uh, contrast and clarity compared to a standard plossel like this, and um, because there's a prism inside it, you might get a little bit more chromatic aberration, and also you get a very narrow <coughs> excuse me, field of view of around about 40 degrees. This is a very basic uh, fully coated doublet plus little eyepiece and the difference is like night and day compared to the um, uh, the uh, erect image eyepiece that you get with Celestrons it is so much better very very easy to maintain you can unscrew half of it here eventually that's got no optics in it and you've got your inner lens and the outer lens whichever way you look at it so you can quite easily free any parts of dust or debris that may have got inside. So compared to the erect image eyepiece this one is so much better. This is at the budget end of Plossels but it's still very capable. Uh, just a fully, a fully coated uh, doublet. I've, I've seen one or two sellers describe this as uh, fully multi-coated which is a little bit naughty but there you go that's up to them. And so this gives with the Astromaster 130 26 magnification. Now you may think, well, what good is 26 magnification? That's not much. But believe me, there's more in the night sky than the moon and Jupiter. And so with this one last night, uh, I had a look at a few objects where you don't need magnification. They show up better with low power. And the first thing I looked at, I turned to Orion and not the Orion Nebula, surprisingly, for starters anyway, a double star in the the belt called Mentica. Uh, sorry if I butchered the pronunciation of that. It's a nice and easy double star, which you will see very easily with this uh, eyepiece, e even good quality binoculars. And um, double stars such as uh, this one, uh, Alberio, the Mysore Alcar, uh, Mysar Alcor double star a lot of them are often seen best with low magnifications because the contrast is so much better and also when you're looking at the moon you, you will see the whole of the moon and so that, that is very good and it will stay in the field of view for a long time and uh, things like the Orion Nebula will look glorious with this um, eyepiece but one thing that really surprised me last night and uh, when I was trying this out I I um, looked at the Pleiades or the Seven Sisters in Taurus and I fitted them all in with this eyepiece using the Astromaster 130. I would imagine with the 20mm erect image eyepiece you won't be able to do that. The stars, the wealth of stars that you could see in the view with using this eyepiece and the Astromaster was absolutely incredible. I, I was blown away and yeah I'm, I'm normally used to looking through a 12 inch Dobsonian or a 4 inch refractor but with this eyepiece uh, put in the Astro Master 130 the, the Pleiades were absolutely stunning. They filled the view yeah, I, and this is from a light polluted area but, all, yeah, but we'll get back onto the subject of Jupiter and Saturn. You may think that you need high magnification for them. You don't. Take my word for it from many many years of observing often, just like double stars, planets are best viewed 
at low magnification because it gives you a, 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 a sense of scale and depth that you don't get if you only look at the planet with nothing else around it. You see the stars in, in, in the distance and just it's an, an amazing sight to see the planet and all the moons and distant stars and and also with the wider field of view you may uh, see a little rogue passing satellite passing through the field of view that you won't be able to see uh, or you have a lesser chance of seeing with a high magnification with a narrower field of view and so lo low power eyepieces are surprisingly uh, good uh, at, at looking at planets and and if you do look at a planet um, go go back to it uh, make a, a mental note of the stars around it in the same field of view and then go back a couple of hours later if you still look late and see if it's moved against the um, the background and I, and I, I believe um, planets you know that they, they are called or what they used to call wandering stars because they travel but, uh, as we see it from our point of view, they travel a lot across the night sky slightly faster than stars. So yeah, the d d by all means do not write off low power eyepieces for astronomy. Uh, most of the stars, there'll still be a point of light unless a double star, regardless of magnification, and you will get that higher contrast. So I hope this helps. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and please check out the link in the description below.